You look so dirty. Oh, I know. That is hoeing on the street. You know, it looks like that. Yeah, I can smell. Mark, it's very bad energy in your house. You need light, not darkness. Hello and welcome everybody to the 52nd edition of Vision du Réel International Film Festival in Switzerland, Neon. As you might know, the festival uh, is taking place online due to the pandemic. Nevertheless, some of the activities will also be in Neon from April 15th to the 24th. I'm very glad to be here with Mark Isaacs. Thank you, Mark, for being with us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Mark is presenting in Latitude section his film, The Filmmaker House, and he has been kind enough to uh, talk a little bit with us about the film. Uh, so Mark, can you tell us how uh, this project was born and what was the genesis of it? Yeah, um, a long time really, because I had some years actually where I finished uh, making a feature length film and I'd done some short films, but was really working out how to make another film um, and to get money for another film because the funding uh, opportunities had changed so much in the UK um, without explaining that too long but like the television companies were really not interested in interesting documentary films you know they it was really depressing in a way you know so I had to I had to think of another way of making films and um, and also a kind of um, low budget way you know but I really I really felt like being um, sort of forced into a situation um, really opened up some very uh, creative and you know and independent ways of of working. So um, I started, you know, I've always made films that are really close to me. I mean, not just physically, but emotionally close. So I'm very interested in the world around me. You know, I don't travel to India or Africa to make films. You know, I kind of tend to make films about what I know. So I think I started automatically thinking about people around me in my own life and um, the themes that I was interested in and what I have been interested in in all my films are our relationship to the other, you know, um, in its broadest sense. So sometimes that manifests itself directly talking about immigration and, um, but also I'm kind of fascinated that as a, in general. Um, and, you know, I, I, as I said, I was sort of looking very much around me and, for some years I'd been interested in my neighbor and um, the kind of different lives that you encounter just you know just when you leave when I leave my front door you know I, I discover the world you know there's people from everywhere and we all kind of just pass each other on the street nobody really connects with each other very much it's just life goes on and so I think slowly slowly I start to think about this a lot and also in the context of Brexit you know about our country kind of shutting down and closing its borders and becoming very insular um, at some point I don't know exactly how it happened but I had the idea of um, setting a film in in my house and and then I started thinking about well who are the characters that can be part of this film and everybody in the film that you that you meet you know is somebody that I know quite well um, and I've known for some time so it's a very different process for me than usual you know where I usually go out into the world and and find people with a specific purpose for them to be in a film. This happened much more organically. My neighbor, um, the English builder, who is actually a character from another film of mine, which never got completed. And um, my former uh, nanny cleaner, who she's, she's still a, a nanny. She's downstairs right now. Um, and, uh, and that's how things unfolded you know Mikel the homeless guy was somebody that I'd known for a while in the area you know not closely but we would just kind of cross each other's paths and say hello and and I, I started to sort of you know once I decided to set the film in the house I thought this could be interesting because it's a way of bringing together these characters in a, in a very artificial way you know um, but also exciting because it's it, it kind of has a question of like well what if these people do spend time together what can happen you know what are the possibilities and um, 
And so how did you work on the on the plot or on the script of the film? Was it more like the, your character were participating in this writing or it was like your process and then you were sharing it with your actors? Yeah, no, it was very, um, very slow and organic in a way that um, the characters didn't have a clue what I was doing. I mean, they I asked, of course, if they wanted to be part of the project and they agreed, but they didn't know exactly what the film was going to be. And also I was making the film up as I was going along. So we would, I would have like an idea of, let's say a beginning and some scenes, and then I would start filming. Uh, I did start filming. And then once I'd started filming, I then um, would think about the progression and what could happen, you know, and that could have meant introducing other characters. Um, but at some point, you know, I understood that the kind of ideas that I'd got up and running um, were really quite interesting. So it was really a question of how to develop those ideas and what mm -hmm. could happen with these characters um, in this setting. And, you know, every scene was thought through in terms of what was going to happen in the scene, but all the dialogue um, was largely improvised, you know. I mean, sometimes I would tell people what to say, but other times they would um, take, that, take that direction and then bring stuff to it as well. And I worked with a writer who was somebody that I was teaching with for a while in a, in a university. And um, together we would watch the material, think about the next scene, you know, shoot a little bit more, watch again. So it was very, very organic and kind of anti the way things work in the industry where you have a script and everything's finalized, then you start shooting, you know? So it was the opposite really. We would, we would kind of, you know, think about what was interesting and what was working and, and start to take it in that direction. Thank you. So you were saying that, it, that the cast is something that uh, it was uh, close to you and uh, was it to inspire you? Was this your source of inspiration uh, or you just uh, uh, like uh, really literally cast them once uh, the project of the film was uh, was on board? I, I think the two things are very connected, you know, like my idea for a film that um, was based in my house and these people came about at the same time. You know, I started to think about myself where I am you know how I sit in my little world and mm -hmm. who's connected to that so the the two things are very very were very interwoven from the start um there were other characters that I thought about um that didn't end up in the film um but all the people were people I knew before so they were um I thought that was important that that there was a kind of um connection already established um so they're people that are naturally in my life, but, you know, so for example, the, um, the my neighbor that brings food, she brings food very often, you know, so that was the, the genesis. So what could happen if she brings food and something else is going on? How does she, you know, what could that lead to, you know? So that was the kind of um, thought process, you know, with, with Mikhail, the homeless guy, for example, is somebody that would never come in my house. And that was interesting to me, you know, what happens if he does force his way in, you know? Uh, gently, you know. Yeah, I think it was, uh, was, I mean, the film is very astonishing for how it develops and what are the different interaction between the characters that it's something completely unexpected. Uh, it's maybe because it's so organic, as you were saying, that in a way, oh, yeah. in a way you can't really predict or it doesn't, it doesn't have nothing of the classical script uh, we can imagine. And well, I think that the, as I saw the main, um, theme or uh, of the film was about hospitality and uh, the boundaries that you can you you should or not should or that in your mind are present in the moment in which uh, you open up your house is something that you were discussing with your cast or um more discussing with the writer that I was working with you know like the, these at some point in the process I read Derrida's article on hospitality which is really fascinating because he talks about talks about many things but one of the things is like hospitality involving risk and and you know in order to have a kind of true hospitality you have to really open yourself to some form of risk you know and the power dynamics in that as well so I wanted to play around with all those questions um you know those themes have always been interesting to me it was just it was it was a way of looking at this particular film through that frame um so yeah and you know and then we also started to think about well, when they come into my house, they also come into my camera, you know. So it it's, it became also about filmmaking because 
I mean, that's what documentary filmmakers do. They invite people into their camera and, and what is going on there? What are the power dynamics? What is the relationship? You know, and I wanted to include that in the film because, you know, I've been making films for 20 or something years and it's always been a very, I've always had a very ambiguous relationship with uh, filming other people. I mean, it's, we rely on these people to be in our films, but the relationship's never easy and straightforward. It's always very strange in a way and complicated. You become very close with people and, you know, ultimately it becomes about, you know, how the position that people have in your films, why are they there and what, what is your intention? And these, the balance and the struggle between um, the filmmaker wanting to tell their story and the people in the film having their own lives, you know, because for most filmmakers, and certainly in the case of myself, I think we, you know, I focus on like 5% of their life, you know, that you see on the screen, but the rest of it is kind of not interesting for a film, you know, so we're very editorializing their existence. And I think all those themes are really interesting to me because um, they're complicated and, and you know, we all rely on, on these people for their generosity and their hospitality, you know, but then what do we do with that in return? And I thought that was an interesting thing to explore, in, you know, in connection with the particular themes of this film, you know. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, it has, has been uh, very, very interesting and I think that is uh, fantastic to hear you talking uh, about the film and our public uh, will really appreciate it. Uh, the film is going to be available for 72 hours online for our spectator. Uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for sharing it with us and hopefully uh, I will see you in Neon uh, with your next film. That would be nice. Enjoy the film, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.